Hello and welcome back to the series It Means Everything, where we go back to the first club of some of our England players. Today we're at Sleaford RFC, which is where Ollie Chesham started his rugby journey. At six foot seven and just 23, Ollie has had a meteorotic rise through professional rugby, making his England debut only two years ago against today's opponents, Italy. Now, since then, he's gone on to accomplish 18 caps for England and played in all seven of the World Cup games in France. Hands the steward and to Alangi. He's got Chesson with him, two Leicester teammates. And Ollie Chesson has England's first try. Today, we're at the club to find out a bit more about one of the places that inspired Ollie on his rugby journey. This is It Means Everything. Hi everyone, it's Ollie Chesham here, um, currently in Rome. I just wanted to wish everyone back home at Sleaford Rugby Club uh, all the best for this weekend. Uh, obviously, me and my brother both started out our rugby journeys there and absolutely loved our time down at Sleaford. Um, and it's always special coming home to see everyone there, so all the best, guys. Players like Ollie Chesham and, yeah. and his brother Lewis have yeah. come through this club. How inspiring is that to see sort of um, this club has played a part in yeah. his career? Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. It really is. I mean, the Chesham family, we do see him come down. And Lewis has been there a number of times playing he's got an under-20 side down, played against our under-20s and everything like that. So support of the club, they're giving back as well, especially for the minis. That inspires them to want to play as well. It's really inspiring because I think where they've come from, everyone else at this club can do the same run as they did. For a club like us, we are just a small grassroots club trying to just provide people as engagement in the sport. So for, for two guys to come along, a bit like buses, you know, and do what they're doing, I can only imagine the inspiration for the youngsters that they're seeing guys that played on the same pitch with the same coaches, you know, the same setup, that have gone all the way to international level rugby. Gobsmacked at how that might impact us over the next, you know, 15, 20 years. It, it just goes to show the young lads, you know, that you can start off at grassroots rugby and you can end up in the, on the big stages. The effort and determination that he's put in, it's now paying off. And uh, yeah, I mean, super, super proud. Came friends to school, playing school rugby. I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I don't think he did either at the start, but yeah, he certainly picked it up as he went along. What's he like uh, as a person? He's just a great leader. Like, you come, we play players all the time that are a bit, you know, cocky, arrogant. Ollie was never like that. He was just a great leader. He, you know, he pushed us to, you know, do our best. Um, at the end of the day, it wasn't about winning or losing for him. It was about, you know, having a good time at the club with his mates. It's hard to tackle someone six foot when you're uh, four foot eleven going into um, year seven. He was the same as all. We just picked it up as we went along, and he just had the natural skills, and he just seemed to pick it up a little bit quicker than everyone else. What's it like now seeing him kind of going from Sleaford and, and, and pulling on an England shirt? And he's had an incredible couple of years, hasn't he? Oh yeah, he's had a fantastic few years. I mean, he's had some great performances. I mean, it gives me motivation to keep playing, even on days like this where I'm absolutely tired. You know, seeing him play out there, I think yeah, if he can do that, I, I'm sure I can manage uh, 80 minutes at a local club. Let's work hard for each other. Nobody gets at each other. We get in there, we work hard together. We go, we keep the tempo going. We come back and in 80 minutes time we're celebrating in these change rooms. Ducky all on you mate, let's go. Sweet! The original uh, the club was started by, I think, four teachers at the local Carlisle Grammar School, and I heard about a club was starting, and I went along to the first meeting in April 1978, and then we played our first ever game at Skegness in September 1978. Wow, is it, I think you, you sort of talk about it as if it was yesterday. That you, the, like the memories are still very much there, aren't they? And I hear you were the first one to get points on the board for Sleaford. Is that right? I'd probably say I was the lucky one. I mean, my story about that is I ran the whole length of the pitch. I probably tripped over my boot laces and fell over the line and scored the try. There seems to be quite a, a big connection, doesn't there, to the RAF and past and present players and, and coaches involved in that. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about it? Well, yeah, because we've got so many bases around the area, we've had RF coaches that have come down and helped us. We had Brian Harshaw, he was um, the combined services coach at the time, and um, he brought so much knowledge to the club. And then plus he knew other people that they would come down and pass on that information as well. So all the time we were learning, and we're still learning now, to be honest. A lot of children start playing rugby, but to, to make the progress all the way through and then become president, what's kept you here for so long? 
I guess it's, it's, it's a family really. From being a four year old, you get to know everyone. Uh, there's many a tale I can tell from you know, some of the older guys, uh, you know, the things, the interactions they have with the younger ones. And that just goes all the way through. So from under fours, through all the way through the, the, the mini and junior section, uh, and then into the senior section. It's just always been what I've done on a weekend. It's come, come down the rugby club, uh, and now, you know, it's helping out referee, play the odd game when I can, uh, when the body allows. Um, but yeah, it's just great to see so many kids down here doing what I benefit from giving that back. The club is run on volunteers. I mean, it's a huge team of volunteers. Um, on a Saturday, we've probably got six or seven volunteers that help out in the pavilion, you know, behind the bar, doing the catering. Uh, on a Sunday morning, um, when all the minis and juniors are down here, there's an army of volunteers. Um, you know, there's tens, tens of 20, 30 of them, um, coaches, managers, etc. So you've played, you've coached, you help behind the bar, you take photos, <laughs> you wear many, many hats, and you also sit on the committee, don't you? Yeah, so um, I sit on the committee as club captain, um, but I just like to help, I guess. I enjoy it at the club and I want the club to do well, so I don't mind doing the little jobs that I can and I enjoy doing a lot of them. I like coaching the kids and seeing them enjoy rugby. Everyone's wanting to muck in and help, it's like family, um, and it's just nice to go and you can walk in and just chat to anyone and everyone will chat to you. Community clubs like ours, they really do need a wealth of volunteers and, and you know, the the onus we put on those volunteers can be a bit overbearing at times, but we are very, very lucky. You know, we, we had issues fairly recently in the last season and the, the club from, you know, those kids, of, parents of kids who were five and six, all the way up to the old guard who haven't been down for a few years, really mucking in. They see the bars busy, they'll hop out behind the bar. Grass needs mowing, an army of parents just came out with lawn mowers and kept the, the grass down in the summer. And you know, it's really great to see new faces, not just the same guys doing it week in, week out, and girls. Um, new faces coming and getting involved and making it part of their club, because that's what ties you in for the long term. When you emotionally invest in something, you reap the rewards, and they're starting to see that as well now. Part of my role as president is to actually reach out and try and generate those relationships, whether it be with local businesses, local schools, things like that, so that they realise that we're a club, not just for club members, but for the community as a whole. And, and, you know, can we use this facility during the week to bring in meetings, which gives us a revenue that's not rugby related, but during that, you know, Monday, Tuesday, during the day, it's a big old building that's empty. So if we can drive revenue during the week, it helps with rugby on the weekend. Sleaford really strikes me as a, as a proper community club and, and I know you personally sponsor the club, don't you, in terms of it, it seems to be a lot of businesses want to get involved here. Investing into the community is so important. The running costs of rugby clubs now are far in excess of what membership brings in. So we do rely on local businesses like ourselves. We've got the main sponsors, Turnbulls, and lots of also lots of smaller businesses that just want to do their bit for the community and we are a community club. And do you remember Ollie and, and Lewis? And I know you've got a bit of a funny family connection, yeah, haven't you, as well? Yes, uh, we actually installed a hot tub for the Chesham family um, back a, a number of years ago. So I say, I guess we've probably got um, a, a helping hand in some of the rehabilitation of those players as professionals. I know that you, you coach the seniors, but you also coach the juniors, don't you, as Which well? One? So giving kids a real pathway in terms of looking at playing rugby from a young age right up to senior level. Yeah, so what we've tried to do, and um, we're working on a bit of a player pathway at the moment, so at each age, group we bring a new you know a couple more skills into the game we're uh, we're developing the players through and we're already trying to start working on little structures that they'll take with them all the way through so things that we've been doing with the under 11s this morning it's the same warm-up I do with the under 11s I do with the seniors in the evening in the afternoon so um, and you know they're, they're starting to see all of that rugby knowledge and they're really sort of developing their game right from a from a very early age and we have 200 children every single Saturday or Sunday running through Supporting as you saw today, you know, all the kids coming down doing their training session before the game today and then coming out and supporting the senior team. There's no reason why the boys can't follow all the way through and as I said, this could be a really really, you know, one of the one of the premier clubs in the Lincolnshire area. The enthusiasm, it smiles on faces. You know, we're just providing an outlet and an opportunity for those local people to come and get involved in a sport that I love and loads of other people love and hopefully they'll grow to love. And what is it about Sleaford that, that keeps you coming back every week and pulling on that shirt and knackering yourself out, playing out there for 80 minutes? It's just the stories of the, the families, you know, they're bringing down the kids 
they grow up. I mean, you know, our, our president, you know, his dad basically set up the club and now he's taking that role on, you know, coming through and families just keep coming through and through and it's, it's just great to see. I mean, the atmosphere here is just fantastic. I can't really describe it. Mean, I think the old saying, once you're a rugby player, you're always a rugby player. Uh, I mean, if I could play this afternoon, I would do. <laughs> Love to, actually. At the tender age of 68. <laughs> All the volunteers, everybody just puts 100% in for the club uh, and just devotes so much time to a club that really we haven't got a lot of money in the club, so we do um, value the, what the volunteers bring to the club. <laughs>